morning, guys. This is normally where I would look at y'all and y'all say, morning, Mr. Siggers. Do y'all know something, guys? I miss y'all. I do. I'm here in the chapel. I've missed y'all. Y'all haven't been with me for several weeks. I've missed hanging out in the barbershop with y'all and just, just hearing how your lives are. Guys, I hope everything's going well for you. I hope that you're adjusting well to your online classes and that things are going smoothly. And that also, while you're at home, you're able to face the challenges and overcome the challenges that you had while you were there before. You know, <clears throat> when I told y'all before spring break that I hoped y'all had a blessed spring break and a good spring break and I'd see you when you get back, I had no idea that it was going to be this long of a spring break. Y'all have got the record for spring breaks, that's for sure. And I hope to see some of y'all in the next few weeks. I really do, and I hope we can get this passed. But you know, <clears throat> I want to share with y'all a little bit here from the chapel. You know, here we are in Easter week. Easter week, you know, what does Easter week mean to me? Well, first of all, it doesn't mean rabbits laying eggs. It doesn't mean chocolate bunnies, even though I do like to enjoy eating some chocolate bunnies and I do like some of them Reese's eggs. I mean, them things good. And Cadbury eggs, I'll go ahead and admit them things are good. But I want to tell you what, what it really means to me. It means that the God who created us, the Heavenly Father, the one of, who formed these world and formed all the solar systems around us, the one that took the time to form you and I, to make us. It says that He knows even the very hairs on our head. And y'all got more than me because mine's been getting missing over the years. But it says that he loved us so much that he sent his son to pay the price for our sins. So, first of all, what is sin? We've discussed what sin is. Sin is whatever comes in between us and God. Sin is things that God has ruled as unholy and unrighteous and things that he says are wrong. So, guess what? <clears throat> we were sinners. We were caught up in our sins. And God knew that the price had to be paid for sins the sacrifice of the sins. So he sent his son, Jesus. And Jesus, he lived on this earth as a man for 33 years. He spent that time, just like you and I, growing, maturing. He faced the struggles that you and I faced. He faced what it was like to fit in, obviously. He faced what it was like, I'm sure, through puberty and all the things that he had to go to because he was, he was God in the flesh, but still, he was very much human also. But back to the subject of Easter, as I like to call it, resurrection. Jesus came into Jerusalem. He entered on a Sunday, and it's known as Palm Sunday. And on that Palm Sunday, he entered into town, and the whole town was celebrating. It was just like, I guess somebody had won a national championship or whatever. The, the town was just, ah, here's Jesus. They were excited. As Jesus rode into town on a donkey, not a galloping pony. He didn't come in on no limo. He came in on a donkey. And the people were taking their outer garments, their cloak, and they were taking branches and laying them down on the road. So even, even Jesus' donkey did not have to get his feet dirty. On that Sunday, Jesus entered town, and everybody was hollering and screaming, Long live the king, long live Jesus, Hosanna in the highest. But within just a few days, that turned on him. And the cry came out, crucify. Crucify. Now, the crucifixion was one of the most brutal ways to execute somebody. What was Jesus' crime to be executed? Well, they were saying that he had made himself up to be God, that he was blaspheming. And Jesus never made himself up to be God. He said he was sent by God, the Father. His father. So, as the crowd hollered out crucify, the local governor, Pontius Pilate, he tried to appease the crowd. First of all, he says, why don't we just scourge him? Scourge. And that's an interesting term right there, scourge. What is scourging? Well, they tied Jesus to a stump, basically. And they took these long leather strips, these whips. And these whips had braided into the whips. They had glass. 
They had, you know, nails, pieces of barbed metal. And every time they came across with that whip, it tore pieces of Jesus' flesh away. It says that even the tufts, his beard was even tore off of his face. He was beaten so bad that nobody would have recognized him. He was beaten just about to the point of death. But after that, then they made him carry a cross. A wooden cross, much like the one behind me. But the one that Jesus had to carry was much bigger, much thicker, much heavier. Had to carry it about a mile's journey, mostly up a hill. And then as they laid the cross down, they laid him on it and they nailed his hands and they nailed his feet to the cross. And they stood it up. They mocked him. They made fun. If you are the Son of God, bring yourself down off of this cross. If you are the Son of God, free us all. And Jesus could have done that. But he knew that the price had to be paid. And the price had to be death. See, you and I, we deserve that death. We deserve that death because we're guilty of that sin. Jesus paid the price that he didn't owe and that we couldn't pay. He did it for us. And as the day grew, as they mocked him, they spat on him, they ridiculed him. The sky got dark. The clouds rolled across the sky. And Jesus laid down his head. And he said, for it is finished. It is finished. What, what was finished? It wasn't his work here on earth was finished. It was the payment for our sin was paid in full. That's what was finished. Paid in full, not in part. The whole bill was paid. Think about that. I heard a story of a, a guy, he, he said, he heard of this man, he got in trouble. Went to court. And the judge sentenced him. He says, for your crimes, you face one year in jail. And that sentence will be carried out immediately. As the bailiff went to go grab the defendant, the guilty, the judge stood up and says, wait one moment. And the judge took off his robe and he walked down from the bench and he went to where the bailiff was. And he put his hands out so that he could wear the cuffs. He says, I'm going to serve this man's sentence. That's what Jesus did for us. That's what he did. He served our sentence. He paid it in full. What does this mean? Well, first of all, this means that when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we're no longer held guilty of our sins. We're forgiven. We're forgiven. He says, you are forgiven and you've been made whole. You've been reinstated. But the greatest thing about the resurrection, it wasn't so much about the cross. The cross is, has a great part in it. The cross has a wonderful part in it because it shows the payment for our sins. But on that Sunday morning, as the sun came up, as people, the ladies, went to visit the tomb that Jesus was in. When they got there, the stone that was covering the doorway was moved away. And the tomb was empty. Jesus was no longer there. Now his death clothes, the rags that wrapped his body, they were laying there. But Jesus wasn't there. He had came back to life. The Father had given him life back. So, so much about this resurrection is not just the, the cross, but it's the empty tomb. And the empty tomb shows that for those who believe in Jesus Christ can be forgiven and have eternal life. What does it say in 
John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Not just everlasting life, an everlasting life with him, a forgiven life. Guys, I don't know when I'll get to see you again. I miss you. The whole staff here at the school, believe it or not, we miss you. Look forward to seeing y'all again. We hope that things are going well for you. And if you have a need, reach out to me. Reach out to me. Give me a call. Give me a message. Get in touch with me. If you're facing some struggles, I'm, I'm, I'm still here for you just like I always have been. Guys, I love you. And before we get off today, I want to do a prayer with you, okay? Let us bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Lord, most gracious Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And Father, I thank you for these young men. I thank you for the times that I get to spend with them, the barbershop fellowship and here inside the chapel services. And Father, as they're at home right now, I ask you to place your hand upon them. Guide them, lead them, direct them, Father. Let them know that you're there, for you are the good shepherd and that you'll lead them on the paths they need. Father, I pray for their families. Father, I pray for those that are with them and those that are their loved ones. I ask you to place your hand upon them also, Father. Father, I look forward to seeing these young men again. and I know that they're in good hands. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And through his holy and righteous name, we pray, Father. Amen. Hey, guys. Hope to see you soon. I want to tell you something. Not only do I miss you, I love you guys. That ain't the first time I've told you I love you, and I do. God bless.